submarine Lafayette, a ship designed to fire the Polaris missile from beneath the ocean surface to a target 2,500 miles distant. It is the 7,000 tons, the heaviest submarine ever built, and now stands poised for launching on building waves at General Dynamics electric boat, Groton, Connecticut. The date, May 8, 1962. The sponsor, Mrs. John F. Kennedy, wife of the President of the United States. With a smile and a wave, the sponsor enters the shipyard to applaud. And a welcome by Roger Lewis, Chairman of the Board and President of General Dynamics Corporation. Escorted by Mr. Lewis and members of the official party, Mrs. Kennedy passes through a Navy Honor Guard on her way to the launch area and another epic in the story of the submarine. A story that reads north of it, Skate, Triton, George Washington, ships which came out of this yard to win glory in the nation's service. And now another name is to be added to the roster, Lafayette. In the launch area, Mrs. Kennedy receives the bouquet of red roses, traditionally presented to the sponsor of the ship. She pauses momentarily for photographers recording the ceremony. Accompanied by Mr. Lewis, the First Lady walks up to the speaker's platform. The ceremony is about to begin. And for the 124th time, a lady has come to the shipyard to christen a submarine, giving life to a new ship in a ceremony which dates back to the time when man first dared venture into the water. Now Mrs. Kennedy is about to become a sponsor, and the Lafayette is about to become her ship, today and for all time. The day is noticeably overcast but it's failed to dim the color or the eagerness of the audience anxiously awaiting the start of the program. It begins with the national anthems of France and the United States. <laughs> Captain Herman J. Schnur, Atlantic Fleet Submarine Force Chaplain, opens the program with an appeal for God's blessings to go with the Lafayette in the days ahead. There's an air of quickening excitement as Carlton Shug, General Manager of the shipyard, welcomes guests to the ceremony on behalf of those who have built the Lafayette and introduces Governor John M. Dempsey of Connecticut. The governor extends an official welcome from the state of Connecticut and tells Mrs. Kennedy, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your presence here today. Among the guests, Vice Admiral William F. Rayborn, father of the Polaris weapon system.
Roger Lewis speaking for General Dynamics Corporation declares the Lafayette is more than an addition to the deterrent power of the United States. It is also a tribute to American technology and American cooperation. It represents the combined efforts of the United States Navy, the Atomic Energy Commission, and of more than 11,000 industrial companies, large and small, across the land. Mr. Lewis then introduces His Excellency Sir Alphonse, ambassador from the Republic of France. Sixteen months ago, on January 17, 1961, Ambassador Alphonse has come here to officiate at the laying of the keel for the Lafayette, welding his initials into the first steel plate set down on the ways to mark start of construction of the ship. This ship, he says, symbolizes the historic friendship between the peoples of France and the United States. May it always sail in defense of freedom. The principal speaker is Secretary of the Navy, Fred Court. The chief civilian officer of the mightiest fleet in history, terms the Lafayette, a splendid example of the shipbuilder's art, and a magnificent specimen of progress toward peace. And to the crew, he offers a wish for fair winds and following sea. And now it's time to launch the Lafayette. Roger Lewis presents the sponsor. Then, escorted by Captain Taswell T. Shepard, naval aide to the president, Mrs. Kennedy walks up to the sponsor's platform. Once again, cameras are focused on the first lady, as this moment is recorded for history. When the Lafayette is launched, the story will be flashed around the world in words and pictures, for it emphasizes anew the growing deterrent power of the United States, a power for peace. Mr. Lewis presents Mrs. Kennedy the bottle of champagne she will use to christen the submarine and explains the launch procedure. A 10-second countdown breaks the bottle against this strike a bar, then the giant ship will be freed from the building ways to slide down to the Thames River. Stillness descends as Mrs. Kennedy moves into position for the bottle break. The countdown begins. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Launch. down the way, slowly at first, then gaining momentum until it reaches a speed of nearly 19 miles an hour. Once it is waterborne, eight concrete blocks weighing a total of 40 tons are dropped on the side of the vessel to slow it down. Submarine, the men who form the nucleus of its blue and gold crew. When the Lafayette joins the fleet, they will alternate in taking it to sea for 60 day patrols, enabling the submarine to be on station almost constantly. A silent sentinel with a deadly answer to aggression. time the wife of a president of the United States has sponsored a Polaris submarine. A submarine named for a man who won the hearts of Americans for his dedication to the cause of freedom. The Marquis de Lafayette came to these shores to aid the struggling colonies in their quest for liberty. He left a legend and 
forged a bond between France and the United States which endures to this day. On the speaker's platform, Mrs. Kennedy exchanges quiet words with Mr. Shuck. She tells him she wants to meet the man who launched the ship. With Mr. Shuck leading the way, she walks among the guests, pausing to greet them, offering her hand to many. Moving slowly through the crowd, the official party makes its way to the launch area. A workman on the ways receives Mrs. Kennedy's bouquet of roses. The flowers are quickly parceled out to become souvenirs of a day to be long remembered. Helmeted workmen extend their hands to Mrs. Kennedy. These are the hands that build ships. Hands that carry on a tradition of craftsmanship and building the world's finest submarine. Now they are offered to the First Lady of the Land. And with each handshake is born a story that will be told time and time again. And there is applause for the First Lady as she walks toward her car. And there is a final wave. Now, back to work. Back to the urgent task of getting the Lafayette ready for the fleet. Ready to fulfill the words of President John F. Kennedy, head of the Polaris submarine, the sooner these ships are on station, the safer we will be.